Thank you so much for having us here. Like I said, it's a privilege. It's the honor for both Hakeem and I for us uh, to actually come in again and present to you One Million Teachers. I will not be doing a lot of talking. I'll let Hakeem actually run us through One Million Teachers, what it is, <laughs> what we do, why we do it, and why do we need all of you to be a part of our community, everyone's community. We need to work towards this as not you, us, but as a we together. And just before I give it to Hakeem, I was visiting Nelson Mandela Museum here, and I actually read this quote, which said, education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. Um, so we're going to leave, we're going to stay with this slide um, at the beginning. And um, uh, what, a, what a great privilege and honor to be here. Uh, Rizma is currently in Western Cape. She is in Cape Town. And um, about um, in March, we traveled from Canada uh, with, this is our biggest education uh, delegation yet. Um, we were about 33 uh, teacher candidates and professors from Canada with the 1 million teacher team to do work. And this work is something that we do uh, every year, except during when COVID happened. Um, I remember 2020, uh, we were, Already, we were working in Kenya, and we were on our way to, um, we we're just planning to go to Uganda when uh, the shutdown happened, and we were already called back to Canada. Um, personally, I mean, I appreciate South Africa a whole lot. I started coming to South Africa in 2015. Um, we were working on a water project. I was the project, uh, the project manager for Project Relief uh, then. Uh, at my university, University of Windsor, and we were funded by the Royal Bank of Canada uh, to work in a village called um, in Marite Village in Pumalanga. So I've done two trips. Uh, I've done two trips after that, uh, and then very recently on on a private visit. Uh, but uh, the team uh, and the, our partner, Queen's University, we all decided, you know what? Uh, we see all. We've been to many countries. Uh, we've been to Rwanda. We've been to. Um, uh, Kenya, we've been to Tanzania, we've been to Nigeria, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, um, you know, together with Queen's University, um, among about the 18 countries that we currently have teachers. And uh, we, we, we like to go to a different place every year so that to understand, uh, you know, the, the, the context in which the teachers that we support work. And, and, and that's why we, we were like, um, yet South Africa is where we would like to be in 2023. And uh, shortly after we left, we decided that, you know what, this is not even a, a, a one-off stop. Um, this is something that we, we will be doing uh, as a group um, every other year. Uh, that is, uh, so we, we will be doing something similar that we just did in South Africa uh, in 2025. May God keep us alive. Um, so what we have seen uh, from South Africa, by the way, I'm putting on my Mandela shirt, uh, mm -hmm. kindly gifted to me by Hani. Um, I don't know if Hani is in the audience. My sister, my friend, a partner in progress, a passionate educator doing everything that she can to make sure that um, um, everybody is included and nobody is left behind. So uh, it's been a great privilege to work with Hani. Uh, you know, we were all at the General Assembly uh, last year in New York, where she, she moderated a very powerful session. And, and I think that led uh, that that also kind of opened everybody's eyes to like, wow, something magical is happening uh, in South Africa. Something magical is happening in Cape Town. Despite all the complaints that we hear, uh, despite everything that we know we don't have an ideal situation, we need to keep going forward. But I really, uh, um, I'm really, really uh, excited to say that um, what we see in Western Cape, what we've seen in Cape Town and Johannesburg, but particularly Cape Town, is something that is worth emulate, emulating that many other teachers in our program can benefit from. But also recognizing that this is a mutually beneficial relationship. So uh, somebody who is giving is also gaining from somebody who is being given uh, because um, you know nobody draws on empty. Um, and, and, and that's the excitement. But how do we work together you know, to uh, raise the tide so that, uh, raise the boat so that uh, everybody benefits. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start with something that is very obvious with uh, to everybody um, uh, when it comes to the primacy of teachers. Um, I don't think uh, anybody would argue that teachers are the most 
uh, powerful resource, powerful tool for effective when it comes to education. Um, the research supports it, we all know it. Uh, the, the question is, how are we ensuring that the teachers, who we all agree, uh, are the most important component of the education system? How are we ensuring that they get all the support that they need in order to transform our society? And if you look at uh, today, we're talking about climate change, we're talking about uh, conflict situations, fight for resources, a whole lot of these things can be attributed to uh, uh, education and teachers are very important to making that happen. However, we have a problem, and, and this is not about South Africa, this is not about Nigeria or Canada or the US or all of that. It's a global problem. This is the stats from the, um, um, from the UNESCO Institute of Statistics uh, in 2026, I think. And, uh, and then we all know that COVID happened, right? Um, we're talking 69 million. That, is, that has gotten much worse than, than when this stats was published. Uh, but when you use statistics, you want to make sure that you're using statistics from uh, relevant um, uh, organization that everybody recognizes. So um, I'm, I am not aware that if, uh, if there's a new publication and we actually, as one million teachers, we work uh, very closely with UNESCO. Uh, we've done projects with UNICEF before. So uh, I think if there is a new publication on this, I would be aware of it. Uh, and, and this is pre-COVID. So you can imagine the situation now that many teachers are so tired, they are frustrated, they've left the teaching profession, and those, many of those who haven't left are thinking about leaving. And in our own part of the world, which is uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, um, and, and, and this, this uh, it, it dif is different from one country to country. Uh, we have, in some situations, in, in the places where we work, we have teachers who have 144 kids in a classroom. I mean, you ask yourself, and you look at this classroom, you're like, wow, this is not conducive for learning. Um, uh, let me backtrack a little. Uh, in 2018, um, the World Bank published a report on education, and, 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 and they, they, they talked about key ingredients that are required for you to have a functioning, relevant education system in place. And um, so we talk about prepared learners, that is students who are cognitively ready uh, physically ready also to learn. Uh, they have adequate nutrition. You know, they are healthy and all of that. Come to the classroom ready for work. And we all know that's not the case in most parts of Africa. Today, we're talking about Sudan, where the war uh, has gone on unabated. And despite all the best efforts of global leaders, uh, the conflict is still going on. And we saw what happened in Libya, how it spread to other parts of Africa. We saw all of this effect uh, with Boko Haram that led to several thousands of teachers being killed in Northern Nigeria. And so many uh, hundreds of thousands and millions of people have uh, been displaced. Uh, and we also know who are the most vulnerable, girls, women, you know, all of that. So the situation is there. So that's for prepared learners. Uh, we talk about uh, having, um, uh, they talked about having school inputs. We're talking about computers in the classroom, uh, blackboard, you know, pens, books, textbooks, all of those kind of things. You understand? Adequate school building, well-ventilated uh, learning environment. Uh, Another, another key component is um, school leadership. And Selma, I, I, Selwyn, I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, happy that you, 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 you talked about what the Citizens uh, uh, Leaders Lab uh, had been doing with, teach, uh, with principals now being opened up to, 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 uh, uh, to teachers. And we see all of this, and I'm gonna talk ab about that uh, uh, in a bit. So that's school input. Uh, now, we talk about curriculum that is relevant to the needs of the, the community, the society. Uh, and more importantly, that uh, beyond that curriculum, that policy, that government institution, the educational leadership they make that is relevant, uh, that it aligns so that we're not all working at cross purposes. And then finally, which is the most critical that they mentioned is effective teaching. You understand? Because there is teaching in most situations, but there is no learning. Students are not learning. So what does effective teaching mean? And that is that, um, at the end of the day, it is about teachers connecting students to their dream, about lighting that spark in fire so that these students know how to solve problems in the world. That is really, really what it's all about. And in order to do that, we need to focus on basic education, making sure that basic literacy, basic numeracy, life skills are, are the things that these students get when they leave our classroom. So now, 
uh, we in the earlier slide uh, that that uh, uh, that Rizma, Rizma showed us, we talked about the challenge with uh, uh, South uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, and uh, we see this is the region that has the most population. Uh, this is the region, uh, sorry, that has the fastest growing population, and this is the region that has the least resources, the ability to cope. So the situation is more dire. Um, not to say that we don't have similar situation in other parts of the world, but the region where we are focused as one million teachers, uh, we have huge challenges. And um, at, in the, the earlier slides, when we're talking about uh, 69 million, that, okay, we need to fill this by 2030. We also, this is about numbers, and we're talking about quantity. How about quality? You understand? So many teachers are in the classroom that have, that can achieve basic numeracy, basic literacy at grade four level. That's how bad the situation is. And we work with teachers in many of these communities. So we know, we see, and it's if, when you are in that arena, uh, it can be really um, discouraging. It can be really, really sad. Um, the question now is, what are we gonna do about it? You know, um, governments don't have enough resources to cope. Um, everybody seems to be overwhelmed. Yes, school systems across many countries have risen to the challenge. They try to build new school, buy new computers, do all of that. All kinds of initiatives have happened. Uh, but we, we say that there's a hill in which we're gonna die on. And that is focused on the most important uh, and lever among all of these components that I have described earlier. And in physics, we talk about leverage. Even in finance, we talk about leverage. Leverage means using less of your own resources to achieve more. And that's really what supporting teacher education, teacher development is all about. It has a huge multiplier effect. In fact, there is uh, a statistic I saw somewhere about uh, one single teacher in the course of their car career impacting about 3,000 students. That's how powerful teachers are. We've seen situations where teachers and parents, where, 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 where uh, teachers are even have more influence than the kids, than their own parents. I, I mean, for my own daughter, I remember you know, my wife will be arguing with my daughter. My daughter will be saying, oh, but my teacher said, and that's almost like uh, that's the, that the teacher is the final arbiter. And we see that all of, uh, in, in so many situations where teachers are so, they have so much influence on the kids. So without urgent action, we're gonna have a worse situation, which has been uh, exacerbated by the advent of COVID. And now we're just kind of getting out of it hoping that uh, we can run even faster to make up for uh, the, 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 the shortfall. And that's the challenge that uh, One Million Teachers is all about. And Drizma, I, I think you already showed that slide, but maybe we should go back there again. Um, yeah, so this is, this is our mandate and that we set for ourselves. Uh, how do we ensure mm -hmm. that we help close the, this gap in the, in the way that we know how to? And how do we ensure that we not only about closing the gap, but that even the teachers who are existing already, they have the qualification, they have the competence to be able to teach, you know? And then finally, we know that uh, people who are dealing with all kinds of debilitating issues in their community, the last thing they want to be part of is for you to talk about uh, educate, uh, come and do training, development work. They're not interested. How do we ensure that people show up at work, fired up, motivated, you know, all the time to say, you know what? Yes, maybe this wasn't the profession I chose for myself. Maybe this was the profession I chose for myself. But how do I continue to be fired up every day to come to the classroom to give my best? And there are many, many ways that we do that, which I would describe for that, um, um, you know, uh, part of this, part of which is what we're doing right here today as part of a professional learning community through Citizens uh, Lab. Um, so that's the 1 million teacher triple mandate. And, um, um, you know, um, we've, we asked ourselves at the beginning, you know, how do we organize this programming uh, in a way that meets the needs of the teachers in the, in the communities where we work? And um, I, I, I talked about Queen's University in Canada. Rizma and I actually uh, <laughs> finished from Queen's University. In fact, the One Million Teacher Project, and by the way, you might be wondering uh, why One Million Teachers, um, because that's how big the, the issue, the question is, and we we need to be audacious. We need to uh, take a stand, you know, and say that, yes, we might not solve all of this problem, but we can work together uh, with like-minded individuals, you know, to effect change at a massive scale. And uh, there are many, many ways where we have, that we develop to achieve that. And you'll see as we go along, uh, I'll talk about the Black Belt Program, 
the anchor school program, the mastermind program we have for teachers, and other similar programs. So at the beginning, uh, you saw the earlier slide about um, the, the how we want to do this, um, novel curricula um, and, uh, and things like that. So we asked ourselves, at the very fundamental level, what does the teacher need to know uh, to be able to uh, provide effective teaching? Um, one of fundamentally, you need to know your stuff, right? You need to have subject matter expertise. You can't be teaching math without knowing math. You can't be teaching English without, you know, being able to read and communicate well and all of that. You can't, you know, so that's, that's a given. But we know there is something more. Um, we talk about pedagogy, which is the art and the science of teaching. Uh, I, can, I, can, I can be a fantastic uh, a physics student, but I may not be able to transfer that knowledge to the student. So pedagogy, soft skills, and all of that. But more than anything else, uh, we, our innovation program uh, for, for teachers, we actually have the uh, MS2 SDG challenge that, uh, for teachers, so, um, which um, is uh, supported by one of the United Nations appointed SDG advocates, who is also uh, advisory board chair. Anyway, so back to the, the, uh, the, the, the triple uh, 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 um, challenge and then the, what we're doing about it. So we worked very closely with the, uh, with the folks at the university, uh, you know, and said, okay, these are the particular areas uh, in terms of topic and uh, that we would like to cover. And uh, we started working on that framework uh, in 2017. Um, I don't think we, we really nailed it until around early 2020, where we say, well, we're at the point where we feel comfortable that what we have put together in terms of content uh, is adequate for the teachers. And then uh, what they do when they get to a certain stage is to have that sense of awareness, the sense of efficacy to say that, you know what, uh, based on what I already have uh, now, I can make a difference in my community. So that's really what we've been doing. And uh, today we have uh, uh, about 37,000 odd teachers in a, a spread across 18 plus countries. Uh, some strange places that we, that we didn't even had any intention to be in. Uh, but why is South Africa so, so important uh, today? Uh, I, I, I said this earlier, uh, in spite of all the challenges that we have uh, everywhere in the world, including South Africa, we, we, we've, we've seen how well ahead some other jurisdictions are, like uh, uh, Western Cape. And uh, creating a community of practice of like-minded educators, educators who are capable on an individual level but making sure that they are in the same room with other capable educators so that they can share best practice, share knowledge, motivate themselves. Uh, uh, there is a saying uh, that uh, if you haven't gone to somebody else's farm, you think your father's farm is the biggest. You know, um, exposing all of these teachers, you know, from across the world, uh, you know, in a community where they excite themselves, you know, and uh, it's been magical what has happened up to date. Um, every Thursday, we have a professional learning community of uh, our Black Belt program, people who have become Black Belt in our program, where they interact with their colleagues. Different people come. Uh, uh, different people come uh, to speak with them, to share knowledge. And it's been a magical experience so far. And uh, this is part of what we hope that every teacher in South Africa, in Cape Town, uh, is a part of. So how do we get to that point where we talk about creating excitement to this professional learning community? Um, and then I'll go further down the slides now. Um, so this, if you're, what you're looking at on the screen is uh, uh, the progression. Uh, we've always asked ourselves, how do we create some kind of uh, excitement? And gamification is a key part of education, uh, uh, more so for adult learners. So, and, we organize all of the courses uh, across this that we call belt, uh, stealing ideas from karate, um, starting from white belt, recognizing that um, you, tabula rasa, you are starting from a clean slate. Uh, we have people who have PhDs who come into this program. Some assume that, oh, because, uh, oh, that because I have a PhD in education or, or I have a master's in education, uh, well, well, we say no, like this is the starting point for everybody regardless. So that not only are we on the same page, but making sure that um, we, we've worked very hard to ensure that 
the curriculum, what we're presenting to the teachers are relevant uh, to their needs. And incidentally, uh, a lot of what is uh, within this content are things that the teachers have. We have co-created with the teachers, the Black Bears themselves. We have co-created with Queen's University. We have taken a lot of feedback every day. Um, our, our philosophy is a living tree philosophy that every day was seen relevance. Uh, I remember one time we didn't have any module on emotional intelligence and the teacher said, well, this is a big issue. We need to deal with this. And it became something that we had to uh, put at the front of the burner so that we can quickly get it up. So based on this interaction, we're always reevaluating. We're always seeing, asking ourselves what is relevant based on the needs of the teachers in their various communities. Uh, some of the courses are not even within the, the core of the program, which is the Black Bear program, because we sometimes we don't want to disrupt the flow. And then but we have them uploaded uh, that anybody could access. So they start from white belt, yellow, you know, and all of that. And uh, within each belt, there are courses organized, three, three courses on the average, four courses sometimes, but until they get to gray and then they get to black belt. Uh, but that's really where it gets very important because all the professional that I talked about is designed specifically for the these teachers who have made the most of the opportunity that have been provided. Um, which is entirely online, um, which is the Black Girls program. And then, um, in the next slide, we'll see um, what happens after they become Black Girls. So My it's really point. about providing. Um, I, let me, I think we may need to we may need to mute somebody. Uh, there's so much noise in the background. Um, yeah, I'm trying to mute that person. Sorry. Um, could I just uh, ask? There's someone who is. Okay, I'm going to mute that person now. All right, go for it. Thanks, okay. you can continue. Thank you, thank you. Um, so yeah, so what happens? Um, initially, you're focused on, as a teacher in the, in the, in the, in the platform, you're focused on um, getting knowledge, you know, um, you know, doing the courses and all of that. But we know it's way beyond that. And if you look at when we said um, attracting new teachers, um, um, making sure that they have their training, uh, that they, the knowledge that they need to do a good job. Um, that's really what it's, it's all about at the first phase of the program. But ultimately what we're striving towards is empowerment. How do teachers feel empowered? And uh, all the various programs like you see here, there are many, many teachers uh, that are involved in research work with us. There are many that are doing community impact projects. In fact, all the celebratory events that most people see about 1 million teachers in various communities are organized by the teachers in their own community. Yes, we support, yes, we provided, um, 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 including financial resources to make it happen, but the bulk of it, in fact, we have donors, uh, supporters within each community who have taken this and are running with it. You know, um, I remember in Kano, Nigeria, uh, Dr. Hadiza who owned the biggest school, uh, when she was hosting the Black Belt, she said, um, well, during our graduation, we're going to hire the biggest events place in Kano, in Northern Nigeria. Ridiculously expensive place to have. And then not only, you, typically we would have graduation events for Black Belts alone, but she said, no, we're going to invite as many teachers as possible that the hall can accommodate. And, and she paid for everything. You know, So there are all kinds of things happening within the community. And all of these are made possible by the teachers and whoever, whichever stakeholders that they find that are really, really uh, um, uh, interested in supporting education, particularly through teacher development. So all of this is about the journey to empowerment. Um, we, uh, Queen's University and us are working on all kinds of pathways. Uh, we're, we're, we're looking at specialization pathways for teachers, like teachers who are focused on STEM, math, uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, special education, like autism spectrum, and all kinds of things like that. And guess what? Um, this is lifelong. Uh, we are with these teachers for life. So there is nothing like, oh, I have graduated. Oh, oh, then I don't have access to the portal. You have access to the portal for life. That is our commitment. So that we know um, you need to learn and relearn. You need to go back from time to time. Sometimes you may just, as a teacher, you may, you may just need to want to do a training within your local community you are able to go back and say, oh, there is material that I learned from this platform. Let me go back you know, and, and, and do a revision. In fact, we see teachers taking this content. Uh, um, there is a self-organizing group in Northern Nigeria again, 
that they organize themselves. They even have association, president, secretary, you know, treasurer, and whatnot. They go from school, a school is hosting every month, and they take a topic from their learning, and it becomes something that they take a deep dive in. So there's all kinds of very interesting stuff. But the most important thing is that they are self-organizing, and they feel empowered to do. And in the next slide, you will see what empowerment looks like. That, you know, and, and I think this is something that every teacher can relate with, uh, um, or anybody who is looking at this, you know, uh, whether I'm a teacher or not. Uh, as far as, I, as as long as I'm a professional, there are many, many things that uh, I, I mean, I, I wake up every day, I feel a sense of pride in the work that I'm doing. And this is something that we, we saw lacking. We still see lacking uh, uh, in teachers. We, we, we see teachers, you know, even within family setting. We had a graduation event recently where the parents were telling the kids, you know, that, oh, you're taking this thing serious. We didn't think that you will be so serious about it. Why do you want to be a teacher? And these kids went into the teacher education program at the college only because they couldn't get into other courses. So reluctantly, they're doing this course. But because of the one million teacher program, they're getting excited and it's becoming a problem for them and their family. We see all kinds of things like that. We see family settings where, because you're a teacher, you don't get invited to decision making around, about the family because they think that you don't have money. You know, uh, South Africa is way ahead, way better than many of the communities where we work with. Like it is, the difference is like light and day. And, and that's one of the reasons why this is so exciting for us. Like there is so much you can share with the world. There is so much the teachers, the educators who are here, the principal can share with the world. Remember, Rising tides lift all boats. Together we are better. The Ubuntu philosophy, I am because we are. All of that is so relevant. We are all our brother's keeper. If there's a conflict in one part of the world, trust me, it's gonna get to you. Part of the reason why Queen's University signed up to one million teachers at the very beginning is also for this reason. Uh, we just got to report that they, they are the number three globally when it comes to sustainable development goal and number one in Canada, when it comes to sustainable development group. You know, when an academic institution sees themselves as relevant in the world, it's not an ivory tower that is doing research alone, but what is the point of all the education you're providing? What is the point of all the research if it's not making effective, uh, if it's make, not making a difference in the world? And this is a mandate, this is a challenge that I'm trying to, our South African teachers, look out for your other brothers from other parts of the world. And I'm not just talking about Africa, there are many, um, areas across the world, particularly in, in, in Asia, Southeast Asia, that are doing this. So let's be part of this global community. And uh, what One Million Teachers is doing, it's a movement already. Uh, the flywheel is getting bigger and running ever faster. Uh, how do we create this self-sustaining cycle where teachers who have become black belt are mentors? And I'll talk about that briefly, uh, the HP Mentor Teacher Program. Uh, you know, um, and our mentors are helping other teachers to be, to be that. So. Uh, Rizma, could you go back uh, briefly to the to the other slide? Sorry. Sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, the word self-sustaining means that nobody is going to come, land, and come and solve any problem for any community. It is we in that community. We see the problem. We can relate to the problem. We have the context, and let's make it that we are part of the problem. And that's why all of the programs that one million teacher does is first of all, we wanna make sure that you have the knowledge, the skill set, but more importantly, what are you gonna do about it? How are you supporting others through mentorship? You know, and then you work tall, you work tall. Uh, when you, you take ownership you, you in your work and uh, anybody who sees you will respect you as a, as a professional. Uh, so Rizma, thank you. Um, so this is one of the programs, for example, uh, the first cohort we had HP executives uh, working with our teachers one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, providing mentorship. Uh, as a result of this need, we found out that, oh, we needed to develop a course on mentorship for teachers specifically. And then eventually we opened it up to any other person who might be interested uh, in the mentorship program. Just recognizing that mentorship itself is a two-way street. You have the mentor and then you have the mentee. But in every part of the relationship, both of them are learning. In fact, we've seen many situations where the mentees actually provide more value than the mentors. So how are teachers showing up? How are they helping to mentor other teachers who are coming up. We have a few teachers from South Africa, so a few HP uh, leaders in South Africa who, who are part of this program um, and they continue to support teachers and they are desperate. They are desperate to have teachers from South Africa 
so uh, uh, that that they can that can be part of uh, that can be their mentees. Um, I mean, they work with teachers across many countries, but I know the feeling of pride they will feel even more when they see that there are many teachers uh, from South Africa uh, who are part of the HP Mental a Teacher Program. I'm sure they'll be very happy to see that we're having this session today. So that's for the HP Mental a Teacher Program. And uh, yeah, so uh, a lot of the work we do is around advocacy. So this is part of the innovation program. We challenge teachers. Um, what, what are the gaps you see? How are you showing up? And we, we, we support, um, I, I think um, we have, we're on our third cohort application for the third cohort just started. And um, uh, they get as much as $10,000 each uh, to you know, solve problems in their own classrooms, in their own community. Uh, so uh, it's really, really exciting. So this is one of the teachers who we invited uh, uh, to the United Nations. Uh, you know, we were invited by the UN to speak about what we're doing. Uh, grassroots led because it's always about self help about grassroots led you know what are we doing in those communities so it's really really exciting to see the very many novel approaches that teachers are using uh, to effect change in their community to support their kids and, uh, and and like I said earlier Annie moderated this particular session and it was just amazing so uh, 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 with uh, South Africans, we should be really, really proud that we had a powerful representative from Cape Town. Uh, in fact, uh, Ladenka, we, we, I just came back from Nigeria uh, to Canada again uh, for an event, uh, which we call the Adverse Catalyst event. And we had a powerful speaker that we invited from Cape Town again. Ladenka, she's a director, I think, in the, in the Ministry of Education in Cape Town. So this is the kind of community that we hope to continue to create uh, to make sure that uh, we are supporting one another. So yeah, so I mean, most of what you see next is really um, uh, about the various approaches uh, uh, in places where we work. So this is uh, 2018, for example, uh, in Ghana. Uh, the next slide you'll see um, Cote d'Ivoire. Okay, this is actually the United Kingdom, not Cote d'Ivoire. This is a um, this is a Queen's campus. So we have uh, teacher candidates who operate from the campus in the UK. Uh, the, um, is in a very gorgeous castle, 600 year old castle, massive, massive uh, land. So we do we do work there. Uh, my next trip is in February next year to work with the teachers in that facility. Um, so um, yeah, and then I think this might just shared the, uh, Tanzania, I think. Yeah, so this is Rwanda, this is Rwanda, and then Tanzania. Um, uh, this is uh, the in Tanzania we we're working with our partner University of Khan University. Uh, this was Kenya, and this is the last uh, outbreak we had before South Africa. So this was in 2020. COVID happened. We had to pack, uh, pack up, and return to Canada. Um, you know. So and then uh, before this year that we had uh, the one in South Africa, um, we do work with various organizations. Obviously, uh, this is uh, we we this was a project we ran with the United States government uh, in uh, Western Nigeria, um, using arts uh, um, arts education to help kids develop the forces, critical thinking, uh, collaboration, communication, and creativity. Um, so, I mean, the, all kinds of uh, programs with governments, uh, uh, including the Global Partnership for Education and UNICEF. Um, yeah. And, uh, so this is part of the UNICEF pro uh, project, uh, Iran. And uh, of course, we work with, I mean, um, the. Uh, the SDG 17 talks about partnership for development. Uh, there's a reason why we focus a lot on partnerships uh, because no one entity has the resources, nor the time, nor the capacity to do this alone. Education is a wicked problem. Teacher development is a wicked problem. And I gave, I gave uh, COVID as an example earlier, um, how this has really impacted uh, teachers negatively to the extent that uh, many teachers are leaving the, the industry. So how do we work together as a collaborative, working with private institutions? Uh, like in this picture that you see is with a bank uh, in Nigeria uh, that's provided a scholarship for several uh, teachers that we work with. So how do we find more partners like this? How do we get Vodacom, for example, in South Africa on board to say that, okay, teachers are gonna use their data to do the online component. Can we have zero rating so that it doesn't, um, mm. they don't get charged for data, all of these kind of things. So recognizing that um, nobody, Nobody can do it alone. And uh, for us, we constantly tell ourselves we need to always encourage everybody. Let them check their egos at the door. This is a problem that whether 
you pay attention or not, it's gonna come back to affect you in one way or the other. So uh, uh, it's enlightened self-interest and we have a responsibility to find people from various places across the world uh, to work together to make sure that uh, we have a society uh, that is highly educated, but not just only highly educated, we know the benefits of it. I wanna be able to walk on the street without thinking that somebody is gonna mug me because the person doesn't have a job, because, because the person doesn't have the skill set to, to, to get a job, to have a decent existence. And education is, uh, you know, as uh, Dr. Nancy Mandela said, is the most powerful weapon that we can use to change the world. And we all are our brother's keep, our keeper in the spirit of Ubuntu. Yeah, so this is all part of our advocacy. Uh, uh, His Highness there is uh, one of the United Nations uh, SDG advocates. Uh, made a lot of, uh, of uh, incidentally, he's also on the board of MTN in South Africa, MTN group in South Africa. So he comes to South Africa a lot. We just left Cape Town and Johannesburg. So these are pictures from uh, the Rewrite to the Future and other workshops that we had in Cape Town, which uh, Annie uh, really did a whole lot of groundwork uh, before the team came. Uh, like I said, it was our biggest delegation yet. Uh, a lot of the teacher candidates you see there and their prof, uh, about 30, about 33 altogether, all of us um, uh, to do work. And uh, we work with uh, an acceleration partner uh, at Ingini. Uh, now we have our dear friends at uh, Citizens uh, uh, Leadership Group. Uh, you know, so it's really, really exciting. Like I said, uh, the wheels are turning faster, they're turning bigger. We're seeing what collaboration means. Uh, and, and, and we're just excited to be able to work with you all. Uh, to make this change possible in our communities. And uh, uh, something I would like to add is um, we, we deliberately wanted to double down on South Africa uh, because South Africa is uh, not just a leader in so many ways, but also uh, it is an anchor for Southern Africa. We have many smaller countries other than South Africa, from Zimbabwe to Lesotho, to Zambia, even Malawi, you know, and all of these countries look up to South Africa for leadership. African countries look up to South Africa for leadership. How do we bring all of these people? How do we make these connections to help everybody become better? When we give, we actually become better, you understand? But we know the benefit for all the teachers who are here, regardless of your status, uh, is immense for the benefit of our kids. Um, so yeah, partnership is key. Uh, we, 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 we work amazingly with the horizon. We work very well with HP. Uh, I, I, I would say that we are married at the hips, we are joined at the hips um, mm -hmm. with this organization along with Queen's University. It's a deep, deep relationship. And uh, as we continue to find other ways to collaborate with others, uh, you know, taking tentative steps, uh, we build confidence and then we get even more excited uh, about what we're doing together. Uh, there, there might be a few schools who Selwyn, so maybe your school will be interested in uh, uh, being an anchor school. Uh, we, we can talk about how, what that process is all about. And then I'm sure there are many, many other schools who might be interested in working with us to be anchor school. So essentially, you are like a magnet. Uh, in the US, you have what you call the charter schools, where a lot of resources are, are pushed away because of the already fantastic job that they're doing. But more than anything, we support other schools with, within and around. And I said, uh, advocacy is a key part of what we do. Um, so we, we, we started this series, uh, which we call the Munataro, uh, is the house award for We Are Coming Together. And then which we followed up, this was in Canada, in Kingston, Ontario. And then we followed it up with uh, another event during the General Assembly in the UN, apart from our, uh, the event where we spoke, uh, sharing our, uh, our work. Uh, so this is the re rewrite to the future that we had in New York. And I just showed you the rewrite to the future in, uh, in uh, uh, the South African edition. So we're hoping that by 2015, we're, we're gonna have a much bigger Rewrite to the Future event uh, in uh, either Cape Town or Johannesburg or anywhere else that, uh, yeah, but the idea is to bring all of us together. Let's have meaningful, deep conversation about the future of education and how we can support it. Um, uh, uh, and November, we also, as part of our advocacy work, we hosted the vice president of Nigeria uh, the former vice president of Nigeria uh, at our university at Queens. And uh, it was such an amazing experience. And this is the kind of thing that we hope because remember partnership for development, SDG 17, no one entity has the resources, nor the capacity to do it alone. We have to find ways to collaborate with others so that we can bake a bigger cake. And that's why this is so important. Advocacy is so important. 
Um, so we remember even at the beginning of your presentation, you talked about um, uh, the, 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 the principals, but now you're inviting teachers. And that's kind of what we see uh, in, in, uh, in our work. How do we provide space uh, for those who are coming on board, who are coming up to be part of a bigger picture? Uh, we, uh, at the beginning of the presentation, we talked about the one empty triple challenge, attracting new teachers. Uh, what you see here is a partnership with two universities in Lagos, owned by the government in Lagos, Nigeria. And we started working with their 200 level, that is year two students, to say, you know what? Let's begin this development program early on, catch them young, so that by the time you are graduating, you're already hitting the ground running. You've been through all of this program, including the mentorship program. Uh, we, we had a fantastic uh, uh, a celebration of the Black Bears from this program. And I, and it, yeah, <laughs> so this is all part of the partnerships. Uh, I hope I haven't taken too much time, but I, I wanted to paint a picture. Okay, um, okay, we were part of the BET, uh, the biggest education technology event in the world uh, in February. Rizma, Rizma uh, left South Africa to attend that event to represent us, and it was huge. How do we create spaces like this more for teachers? You know, um, um, yeah. Um, you get as excited as I am always about 1 million teachers. Uh, uh, for us, this is a lifelong uh, mission. Um, this is uh, something that we feel very passionate about. And we think that uh, uh, the whole world should be paying attention to something like this. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll just end here. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, uh, excited to take a deeper dive through questions. I know we won't cover everything, no matter how long we spend today, but I hope I have uh, managed to provide an overview of the work that we do and uh, also to excite you. And then I'm also inviting you to be part of this movement that we're all hoping to co-create. Thank you. Thank you, Hakim. It was such a uh, interesting uh, whiz through. You, you basically had to basically squeeze everything into a few minutes, but thank you. Um, for, for doing that, Hakim. I'm directing my question to Hakim. Okay. So I was at um, Address Catalyst a okay. few days ago. I saw some of the One Million Teachers project, and I am a passionate uh, teacher in the private school industry. And um, we have this uh, a, a group of private school teachers that we've been bringing together to ensure that uh, we get them trained and retrained and engage the, uh, some private school owner in terms of welfare improvement of the private school teacher because it doesn't matter how many training you give to a teacher that is poorly remunerated okay. it's not going to go a long way so We've been engaging with some school owners association, uh, meeting with uh, some government uh, officials. And I want to uh, request for a collaboration with you uh, to see how we can bring the large number of people we have into the 1 million teachers uh, organization for, for, for them to also uh, be a part of this uh, 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 training and retraining and probably because I'm looking at we in Nigeria here engaging the government in make sure that government recognizes the 1 million teachers program and acknowledge the certificate issued at the end of the training in the 1 million teachers uh, organization. So it is a dream that I have, and I hope uh, our collaboration will be fruitful. I stay here in Lagos, Nigeria, and that is why I was able to attend the uh, Adverse Catalyst program, but I couldn't uh, have a physical communication with you, Akim, uh, until I left that very day. So uh, Ali, thank you so much. Um, you're, you're, you're preaching to the choir, essentially. Um, Rizma has shared our contacts. Please, let's, uh, uh, let's talk.
excited to collaborate with you, very happy. Uh, like I said uh, in my presentation, this is a key approach, uh, partnership for development. So um, don't even worry about it. Let's, uh, uh, let's connect and then, and then we'll, we'll discuss how. Um, uh, um, I mean, just something to, to, to note also is that um, we are not trying to replace government or anything or whatever anybody is doing. Um, it's about collaboration. We work with academic institutions, um, uh, government owned or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, the most important thing is that um, uh, uh, teachers have access to ongoing professional development. It's really for them. Yes, the certificates are fantastic. You know, I mean, I like to put things on my wall and all of that. And, 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 and we work with many ag government agencies. Uh, you know, they say the, the taste of the pudding is in eating it. Um, so nothing uh, to worry about that. Uh, but you also talked about motivation and this is a key component. We've seen it happen many, many times. The teachers uh, who uh, just don't think that uh, they, their focus right now should be on, on developing themselves. And we provide all kinds of incentives as you probably saw. I don't know if you attended the graduation event for the teachers. Um, it was just uh, an experience. Uh, and as we get better at what we're doing, as we have more collaborators, I think we can do more uh, for, for those teachers in that area too. So yeah, excited, uh, please let's connect. Uh, uh, Rizma already shared uh, my email and then um, yeah, we'll take it further from there. Thank you. Um, I'm representing business uh, from, from a corporate perspective. Uh, I'm based in, in, in Gauteng in South Africa. Um, and we are in the business of product development for schools. We're all about libraries, as Selwyn would know by now. Um, and we're all about getting product into the hand of the child through whatever channel is available out there. Um, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, what's the right word? There's a lot of resistance and difficulty in terms of getting um, our information out there, especially being small. And I, I heard you, uh, um, Azim, uh, uh, talking about um, you collaborate with academics and all of that uh, and entities. Um, and I know you, you, we've got the big uh, superpowers. I mean, the, the, the global multinationals and all of that that are doing excellent work and all of that. But I strongly believe that the smaller role players and in South Africa, believe you me, there are some seriously good quality small businesses that are churning out fantastic product that the teachers can use to offload um, and educate the children. But there just doesn't seem to be a platform um, for for them to to get the information across and that's why i do believe that collaboration with entities such as yourself selves is very important um, not from a buying perspective but to understand what is out there that you can showcase and guide governments um, and it's not a south african thing it can be any any country in the world um, to say hey here's opportunity there's stuff that could work it ties in <coughs> nice component of the curriculum etc um, and and i just do believe that um, I, I think you know, having a look, I don't know how many people are on this platform today that are from a business perspective, um, because it's it's good to have the schools and the entities and government sectors um, sharing this. But I think it's it's critically important that that the the corporate side it, uh, uh, representing education needs to be involved in these sort of platforms far more frequently, um, so that they can share and ob uh, obtain information. Because for, for me, it's critical that I obtain as much information from um, uh, entities such as yourselves, because it helps me to go back to the drawing board to see how can we improve, how can we work together. Um, at the end of the day, our future depends on it. Uh, our future is in the hands of our children and every second that goes by is our fault for not making it happen. Um, and I sound like a broken record um, <laughs> when, when I do share, but that's the essence of it. And, and I just like your, your thoughts on that, because I think collaboration needs to be powerful and not just limited to a few big entities out there um, in terms of uh, the trusts that, that are out there. It needs to be thrown out far and wide and opportunities presented that people can showcase what they've got um, uh, out there. Just an, as a closing note, I've received an email during the course of this from a seven-year-old girl who wants us to tutor her to help her to write books because she's actually written a story and she wants to know how to go about it. She wants to be a writer and author one day, a seven-year-old wow. child. So, Wow. That, that is it's just blown my mind um so so in part while i was listening to you I'm, I'm firing off emails to say listen we need to get hold of this child and and talk to her because that's opportunity that's future right there so <laughs> I think your thoughts on you know how we can drive collaboration um and and, and get more um you know it's, it's businesses involved in making this a reality 
thank you so much for your contribution. And uh, it, it's just exciting to see that uh, there are many people, you know, saying things the way we see it. Uh, I, I may not have done a good job earlier uh, talking about this kind of collaboration, but it is not only the big organizations. Um, I, I, I said something earlier about uh, somebody who just ran with the One Million Teacher Project uh, in, in, in her community uh, as an individual contributor. So um, we are really, really excited by this, by this uh, idea uh, um, you know, that you've put forward because it's, uh, it has to be local. It has to be local, it has to be grassroots-led development. Uh, while yes, the big multinationals that we work with are very, very good, but we also know the difference uh, should be should happen more in the uh, within the communities within each country. So um, we're really excited. I I hope that uh, beyond this uh, session we can uh, get together to kind of co-create. Let's have a conversation about how this can happen. Uh, there is a company in South Africa. Uh, they make air conditioner. They, uh, Daikin, I think it's a Japanese company, but they have a, a big South African operation. And, 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 and they, we, we've been in conversation around something like this that you, you've mentioned. And uh, we, we, beyond that, I, I think uh, when I say we're building a global movement, I, I mean it with every sense of humility and also responsibility uh, that we were creating a platform uh, in which we're able to bring people involved in education you know, or who are keen to support education or who are keen to do something around education uh, to come together. And I think we'll be extremely happy uh, to, to work with you. Uh, then maybe we'll gain better insights uh, into how best we can work together with similar organization to make sure that the tools that students and teachers and or any other educator for that matter that they need uh, get to them. And, 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 and I think that uh, that distribution, that pipeline uh, that we're creating uh, can be very relevant. Uh, to the seven year old, we actually have uh, an innovation, one of our innovation program, we have some uh, teachers who are in that, that we've funded significantly. Um, for example, in Malawi, uh, Jen Chikapa's project is about getting kids to publish their book. And they, most of these kids are within this age range that you just mentioned, seven year old. Uh, I think it would be nice to connect uh, Jane uh, and our team. I mean, we can, we can talk about this, how to best tap into that ecosystem. So we're part of several ecosystem. And I, think, I don't think Jane is the only one. We have so many projects along that line, but she has probably uh, significant experience with helping kids to publish their books. Um, I, I think when we get to talk, I can share some of her work with you, if you're on WhatsApp, uh, just to see how far um, they just sent me uh, something that they just uh, that they did again that they're going to launch in a very big way. Uh, incidentally, uh, Jane, who is a black belt, who is also in our innovation program, has gotten to the point where uh, she's been elevated so many times that um, last year, even when she was going to uh, when the, the um, um, Malawi was going to participate at the education summit, you know. Uh, she was honored to be part of that conversation, you know, uh, and that's leadership, and that's how people step beyond, out, up beyond their classroom. So, Christopher, you're preaching to the choir. And I, I always say this when I make like minded people from even from the time you started talking, I knew that this is something that we're already doing. Um, I may not have talked about it because of time constraint, but yes, please, let's get together to make this happen. And just to add to what Hakeem said, I could feel the passion in your voice as well that you really do want to work towards it. So I would say you are welcome on board. We can definitely actually look for partnerships, collaborations, and I'm sure there are many others that we can actually talk about. And like I always say, and Hakeem is saying, it's a global community. So there are different opportunities that we can always work together on to actually work towards the enhancement of teachers, of students, so there are different opportunities that are out there. So let's get connected and we'll talk about it. Delighted seeing you for the first time. And I will say it's indeed a great honor to be part of One Million Teachers. In wow. fact, I've learned a lot and I must say, it's really a blessing to me being part of this program. But let me not waste much of your time 
let me go straight to what I want to ask. Now, I'm in the north here, north of Nigeria here, precisely in Kanu, where we have an ongoing program. Yes, we teachers, we are trying to see how to build ourselves. But I want to ask, so far, one million teachers has been looking at teachers, teachers, teachers. Because one of my students walked up to me the other day and was like, come, one million teachers, can't they look at also the students themselves? Can they look at ways of building students? Can they look at way of equipping students? We are talking about technology. We are talking about different aspects. And the student was, the question really touched me because I could see fire in her eyes to really grow. And I was really dumbfounded. I didn't know what to, and I must say, this is a welcome opportunity to like through this question. And also how can one, at least I've heard of the collaborative effort that is ongoing one million teacher and other agencies. So that has answered one of my questions that I sent on the question and answer platform. But the aspect now I'm asking, is there a way one million teachers can also now begin to reach out to the students? Because there are some students that they are not looking just to grow from what they learn in the classroom. They are looking for avenues to grow. And honestly, I for one, I'm just running my, running my although I have my degree, but I'm running my NC program. And I, I'm, I make bold to say that through 1 million teachers, I go to exams, I go to test, and most of the questions look as if I have done all those things before, because through 1 million teachers, I have learned a lot. So I want to know, is there an avenue that 1 million teachers can also reach out to students, let them also undergo their own training and learning and also build themselves? Thank you. Incidentally, somebody spoke about you. Uh, I didn't like. I I have I, I haven't connected with you in person, but somebody spoke about you uh, when we are the catalyst event. And let me tell you what the person said. That there's this teacher that I'm hoping to steal, and, and I'll leave it at that. That's how well you were regarded. So I'm I'm glad that uh, you are at this session. I had no clue, uh, but thank you for your question. Um, you know, in life you choose your battles. We said teacher development is the hill in which we're going to die on. So that's our singular focus. No distractions whatsoever. Uh, we know when the teachers are empowered enough, I think they can support as many kids as possible. Uh, but this is where we want to channel. If we're not just teachers generally, but the black belts, you know, this is where we want to channel our energy. However, um, about after we after our event at the United Nations last year, uh, conversation started happening uh, with UNESCO. And today, uh, there's a program that we're developing, we're co-creating uh, to provide um, life skills and digital um, training for students directly and other related stuff. So that's in the pipeline, is in the works. Uh, we'll probably launch the first uh, pilot, uh, the pilot, sorry, uh, sometime later this year or early next year. So uh, please stay tuned. Uh, you would hear more about that. Uh, but remember, this is the core of what we do. It's always going to be one uh, uh, with teachers. And uh, so hopefully other people take ideas or take action to further support students directly. Yeah, so, but thank you so much, uh, uh, um, um, Prince. Thank you. I really, really say that a lot of my colleagues, with the way things are going, most of them are joining up and very soon, Kano State will take Kano State by storm very soon. Thank you. This, I'm in South Africa and thank you for you know, bringing up the education sector so high from you know, global collaborations. Here is the a challenge that I want to put forward and how do we bring the solution together as you have already started to collaborate with the NPOs as well? Do you do that? And how do we get resources to be on board and not to reinvent the wheel, but to partner in what is happening around the globe through the program already? 
May I pose that question? Or yes, if we want to partner or join as a panelist, thank you. Thank you for, for, for your contribution. Um, we are not asking any teacher to, at least not for now, um, we, 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 we find ways to support, provide opportunities to as many teachers as we can within the limits of the resources that we have mobilized so far. Uh, if that tab closes, we will figure out something, but we never rest. We're always looking for various ways, uh, but for as, as far as providing this opportunity to teachers in South Africa is concerned, there is no cost to the teachers. Um, we seek collaboration. We seek to work with similar organizations so that we can um, accelerate it, so that we can onboard more, and we can so that we can provide even at the, even more incentives to the teachers. Uh, so aside from that, uh, we really uh, are not asking for anything. Uh, we we know how challenging it is. It's been for teachers uh, and from yeah. a financial resources uh, perspective. Uh, and that's why we always challenge a corporate institution to say, you know what, this is your problem as it is for the problem of all of society. And um, you are helping yourself by getting behind something like this so that we can provide more support for teachers. So just imagine we've been able to have very fantastic events where teachers are treated like royalty. Um, and I think it, it makes a whole lot of difference. So, um, and, and we're excited. We our doors are open. Our partnership for development is a key approach to how we work. And the more locally based, the better. Uh, because um, yes, we there is a word we even use internally called globalization, glo glo global, but local at the same time. So how do we work together collaboratively? Uh, we're, we're always, always open to, to, to this uh, uh, kind of conversation. How do we work with you? Uh, um, sometimes the resources that most of us even think about may not even be in cash or whatever. Uh, maybe somebody has a fantastic venue, then we don't have to pay for venue to have event. Maybe somebody sells food, then maybe, you understand that has so many things. Um, yeah. A telecoms provider, for example, was saying, hey, um, you're selling data, let that data, let it not be a cost to those teachers so that every time they access our platform. So there are many, many ways uh, to, 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 to put it together. Um, and, and we are excited. Um, thank you so much for your contribution. Thanks for asking that question, for showing up even. And uh, I hope that uh, we can take this conversation beyond uh, this session. And uh, um, uh, Rizma is currently in Absolutely. Cape Town. Um, yeah, she's in Cape Town as we speak. And she's not uh, back in Canada yeah. on the 17th. And but, the uh, real need is more where I am right now and to do things online and to support the teachers as well. So please contact me as soon as possible. We were just in the process of setting up permanent office in South Africa. So yeah, that's how, how, how deep okay. we want to go working with okay. everybody. Uh, I would like to say as well that I've shared the link for the sign up for that platform as well. If there are any teachers who would like to sign up, uh, feel free to actually sign up for the form I've sent, which will give you the access to our learning management system that Hakeem talked about, the Black Belt program. Um, and I will have even shared my WhatsApp number. If any of the teachers, anyone would, would like to talk further about it, meet me in person, um, for sure I'm available to actually do that.